The movie begins when Miss Rena is about to be beheaded. People cheer as the guard ties her hands to her back. Right before the sword runs through her neck, she stares at a man named Marquis de Sade, who is standing behind the window of a tower. Years later, at Charenton Asylum for Crazy People, a laundry maid named Madeline goes around collecting the inmates' dirty linens. She whispers to the Marquis, who is one of the inmates, through the door. He hides some manuscripts in his linen and gives them to her. Madeline sees the manuscript and covers it with other linen. She hides the manuscript in a basket of linens and gives the dirty linens to her mother to wash. Madeline lies that she wants to take out the bleached linens to dry and rushes out. On her way out, she bumps into an inmate, Buchin, who blocks her from passing. Abbe du Coulmier, the Charenton priest, cautions Buchin and tells him to remember his manners. Madeline smiles back at Coulmier and leaves. Madeline delivers the manuscript and tells the delivery man it is the last chapter to be published. In a flirtation, the delivery man tells Madeline she will tell him her name next time he comes back for another manuscript. Madeline smiles and watches as the delivery man rides off on his horse. The smuggled novel spreads around the city, reaching the palace. In the palace, the king's right-hand man, Bel Benny, reads the romantic novel to the king. He stops at some points and tells the king that the writing style of the novel sounds like that of the Marquis. In annoyance, the king grabs the novel and tosses it into the fireplace. The king commands that the novel be seized and withheld from the general public. He orders the author of the novel to be killed, but Delbeni convinces the king to make Dr. Royer discipline the Marquis. The following day, Delbeni goes to see Dr. Royer and speaks to him about the Marquis. Later that night, at Charenton, Madeline narrates the romantic and sensual novel to a group who get aroused as they listen. She is interrupted by one of the workers at the asylum, Charlotte, who advises her to stop reading such nasty novels, but she continues. Sometime later, Madeline goes around to share clean linen. The Marquis grabs her by the hand, asking for a proper visit, as she drops his linen through the door. She quickly unlocks his door and slips in. Getting in, she doesn't see him. She looks around the room and sees strange things. She sees a closet and walks towards it, but is frightened as the Marquis suddenly shows up behind her. She gives the Marquis information concerning his manuscripts and asks for more romantic and sensual novels to be published. The Marquis asks to make out with her for each manuscript release, and she decides to agree to his request. Suddenly, he grabs her. Walking through the halls, Kulmir hears moaning sounds coming from the Marquis's room. As he walks towards the room, he is interrupted by one of the inmates. Eventually, he walks towards the room in the nick of time to disrupt the Marquis from forcing himself on Madeline. The Marquis invites Kulmir for a drink, and Madeline rushes out of the room. The following day, Kulmir leads the choir to sing and is interrupted by Dr. Royer. Dr. Royer tells Kulmir of the rumors he hears about the Marquis, practicing the very sensual things he writes in his book. Kulmir claims the rumors are wrong and leads Dr. Royer to the Marquis's room to see for himself. Dr. Royer shows Kulmir one of the Marquis's novels that spread to the general public and instructs that the Marquis be kept quiet or the Charenton will shut down. Kulmir begs Dr. Royer, and he promises to take charge of the matter. Kulmir then goes to the Marquis and demands that he stop smuggling his novels to the general public and putting Charenton at risk. Dr. Royer catches Madeline eavesdropping as he walks toward the Marquis's room. The next morning, Dr. Royer suddenly visits the church to take his bride Simone home and apologizes. They arrive at an old house, where they are welcomed by an architect named Pruix, and Dr. Royer orders that Simone's room be locked from the inside and that her windows be high and great to cage her. At night, Dr. Royer goes to Simone's room, rips off her clothes, and makes love to her. The following day, the sisters at the church gossip about Simone being too young for marriage. The gossip spreads around the city. That night at Charenton, men and women, including Dr. Royer and his wife Simone, arrive for a play. The Marquis's wife, Madame Leclerc, also attends. Meanwhile, the Marquis cautions those who will perform to give their best. The play begins, but the Marquis changes the play to a new one dedicated to Dr. Royer and Simone to imitate them. Simone enjoys the play, but Dr. Royer is pissed off and orders Simone to leave the play. Backstage, Madeline peeps through the curtains to see the play, and Buchan grabs her from behind to make love with her. Madeline struggles, reaches for the coal iron, and smites him on the face. Buchan screams out in pain until he gets to the stage and the play ends. Dr. Royer leaves angry and closes down the theater. Kulmir begs for a chance, but Dr. Royer rides off. Sometime later, Kulmir is in the Marquis's room and seizes all his writing materials. The Marquis begs, but Kulmir leaves and shuts the door behind him. Soon, Madame Leclerc visits him at Charenton with gifts. She complains of being ridiculed in society due to his actions. He moves close to her, caresses her, and then slaps her into the afterlife.
she tells him she just wants her anonymity back and she wants to be invisible again. The Marquis shouts at her, and the guards come to drag her out. Madame Leclerc rushes to see Dr. Royer to plead on her husband's behalf. Dr. Royer advises her to use the money generated from the Marquis's novels to become rich and no longer be ridiculed by society. At Charenton, the Marquis is desperate for a quill and ink to write. Madeline brings his food. He asks Madeline to unlock the doors, but she doesn't because the guards are watching closely. While still uncomfortable, the Marquis pours himself a glass of wine, and the wine overflows onto the table napkin. He gets an idea and decides to use his wine as ink, his chicken bones as quills, and his linen as paper. Soon, Madeline goes around for the inmate linen, and the Marquis delivers the linen. Madeline sees the writing and hides it. She begins to rewrite it into a paper for delivery while Madeline's mother washes the linens. At delivery, Madeline tells the delivery man her name and asks for his. He says he will tell her when she rides with him the next time they meet. Later, all the linens turn red, and Madeline's mother is accused of staining the inmate's linen. Dr. Royer realizes the stain came from the Marquis's linen, and Kulmir orders the seizure of the Marquis's properties. Meanwhile, Simone sneaks out of the house to buy one of the Marquis's books. She changes the book cover and hides it from her husband. The following day, the Marquis, so desperate to write, breaks his mirror and cuts himself to use his blood as ink. Soon, Madeline goes to give the Marquis some food and sees injuries on his fingers. He asks her to open the door for a surprise he has in store for her, and she hastily opens the door, but Charlotte sees her as she enters. The Marquis shows Madeline his new book, which he has written all over his walls and on his clothes. Madeline is happy and is about to leave when Charlotte appears and threatens to report them. While Madeline begs her, the Marquis uses the opportunity to run out of the room, and Charlotte screams for help. Dr. Royer orders that the Marquis be dragged back to his room. Soon, Kulmir goes to the Marquis and strips him of his clothes. Later, Madeline is reported to Dr. Royer for unlocking the Marquis's door, and Dr. Royer orders Madeline to be beaten. When Kulmir arrives on the scene, he offers to take the rest of her beating, and Dr. Royer stops the beating. Madeline goes to the clinic to treat her wounds. Kulmir begs Madeline to stop all that she is doing for the Marquis and also stop reading the novel. Madeline claims she can't because she sees herself as a character in the novel. Meanwhile, Simone gives Proix her novel to read. Seeing this, Proix tells Simone to lay the books aside and experience it for herself. Simone gives him a flirtatious look and says she will need a teacher. That night at Charenton, Madeline could not sleep. She sneaks into Kulmir's room and makes out with him. His desires become aroused, but he sends her out of the room because such should not be done as a priest. Kulmir lies and says that he only loves her as a sister in the Lord. Madeline angrily storms out of the room. At Dr. Royer's house, Simone and the architect make love and plan to elope. Dr. Royer comes home and doesn't meet Simone in the house. Seeing the Marquis's novel on his wife's bed, he rages in anger and tears the novel into pieces. Dr. Royer heads to the asylum, locks the Marquis on a chair, and turns his head over into a pool of water. Madeline uncomfortably goes to the Marquis's room and asks for one final story before he dies. The Marquis says he can't tell a story without a quill and ink. Suddenly, the Marquis hears the inmates' distant voices and gets an idea. He tells Madeline to stay awake with a quill and some ink to write. That night, the Marquis sends words bit by bit through the other inmates' mouths while they are in their rooms, and Madeline writes the words down as they get to her. The Marquis sends the words until an inmate, who is so affected by the words, sets his room on fire. The fire spreads and everyone hurries out for safety. Madeline goes out to check on what is happening and runs back to her room for safety. She notices that Buchan has escaped. Buchan shows up and grabs her from behind, covering her mouth and pointing a pair of scissors at her neck. Madeline tries to scream, but when Dr. Royer hears her screams, he goes to lock the door so that no one will hear and enter. Madeline struggles to escape from Buchan but can't. Kulmir looks around for Madeline but is unable to find her. Everyone rushes out as the fire escalates. Finally, Kulmir enters Madeline's room and sees blood stains all over the room, but Madeline is nowhere to be found. Kulmir sees Buchan running up the stairs and asks where Madeline is. Buchan tells him he is sorry, but says he couldn't help it. Kulmir checks the pool of water and finds Madeline's dead body. The following day, the delivery man comes for the manuscript and does not find Madeline at the usual spot. He calls for Madeline, but no one answers. Buchan is captured, and the guards lock him away. Dr. Royer speaks to Kulmir, who is still in shock, and asks him how he will answer to God for the death of Madeline. Filled with rage, Kulmir goes to meet the Marquis in the dungeon and blames his novels for Madeline's death. The Marquis expresses a lack of care and claims to have made love with Madeline before she died. When Kulmir tells him that Madeline was a virgin, 
he drops his guard and begs to give Madeline a proper burial. Soon, the Marquis's tongue is removed, and Coolmere takes it to Dr. Royer. Dr. Royer commends him and tells him to sleep soundly. Later that night, Coolmere dreams of making love with Madeline. The guard calls Coolmere to the Marquis's dungeon, since the Marquis is dying. Coolmere prays for him and asks the Marquis to kiss the chain cross. The Marquis swallows the cross and kills himself. A year later, another man, the Abbe du Maupas, introduces himself and offers to work at Charenton. Dr. Royer, now in charge of Charenton, shows him around. He takes him to the Abbe du Coulmier, the previous priest, who is now locked up as an inmate because he never did recover from watching the Marquis kill himself. The final scene shows Madeline's mother sneaking some writing materials into his cell. Coulmier begins writing immediately. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.